Shalom. I'm not sure who all is with us, um, but we are waiting to begin with a exploration of the first Hebrew month or biblical month of the year, which is Nisan. Shalom, Annette. <laughs> Welcome. So we're just about to begin the uh, taking a closer look at the first Hebrew month of Nisan, which is uh, very important um, in God's calendar. So let's begin by seeing where in the Bible we discover that God himself put in place this uh, first month of Nisan. Good morning, Rina. I'm so happy you can be with us. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, well, so I'm going to read you the first verse where we hear about the how God put in place the months of the year. And that, of course, is in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2, where it says, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Now, if you'll notice uh, that twice in this verse, it says that the um, month is put in place for you. Shalom, Cindy and Barbara are with us. It's good to see you. <laughs> Baruch Haba. So we just looked at the verse in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2 where it says, The month shall be for you, um, the beginning of the month, it shall be the first month of the year for you. Now this indicates that God has put this in place for our benefit, for the benefit of his people. Now how? How does that work? The benefit is that he's giving a gift of renewal every month. It's a time to set aside and particularly um, strengthen ourselves in our relationship with him, to in, in our worship of him and in our service to him. So it's, it's, um, we should do that every day. Of course we do. But, um, but life gets so busy and you get you know, fo your focus is on other things. So it's just a reminder every month to turn our focus back to Him. Now we do that once a week. When does that happen? We have the gift of Shabbat. So on Shabbat, we also draw aside and specially focus our attention on Him. And here, this is also once a month we can do this. Um, you know, there's a Midrash, a very interesting Midrash that says, God granted his people the authority to sanctify the new moon, unlike Shabbat, which is sanctified by heaven. Now, what does that mean? We know that Shabbat was sanctified and set apart by God himself right in the very beginning at creation. But they're saying, but when he's giving the new month now, uh, at this particular part, uh, point in Israel's history that um, he's giving it to them and saying now you take this and you sanctify it you uh, put it in place it's the very first commandment after they've uh, had the exodus from Egypt now um, people sometimes ask me but you know if we believe uh, in Jesus as the Messiah if we believe um, if we are Christians, do we also still need to keep uh, follow the Hebrew months and recognize Rosh Chodesh, which is the new month? And, you know, I believe that, that it is a gift that, that everyone who is following God can, um, can receive. Why? Because we read in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23. And this is in re reference to the final redemption when Messiah has returned, when he's reigning from Jerusalem um, and establishing God's kingdom over all the earth. Now listen to what it says. It says, 
from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Now, right, you can say, oh, well, I'll just wait until he, Yeshua has, is back and he's reigning from Jerusalem, and then I'll maybe uh, also follow the new months. But I think uh, here we're given the opportunity to start even now um, taking notice of the Hebrew calendar, which is the biblical calendar, and learning what there is to learn in every new month. It's so full of meaning, and there is so much. Ever since uh, we started doing this, uh, I'm realizing how much more there is to learn all the time. Now, I just see Salon is with us. Shalom, Salon. Welcome. <laughs> Glad that you're here. Um, now, in case you don't know, the biblical calendar is a lunar calendar, so it does follow the new moons every month, um, but it is cal um, calibrated with the solar calendar every seven years. An extra um, month is added to the Hebrew calendar so that it stays in harmony and in sync with the solar calendar. Now, that's a leap year, and in the leap year, an extra month is added at the end of the year. Now, the last month of the year, which we're in right now, is Adar. So, you have, in the leap year, you have Adar Aleph and Adar Bet. Adar A and B. And uh, Purim is always celebrated in Adar Bet, because that finishes off the year before Nisan begins. Now, in ancient Israel, um, how did they know when the new month had started? There were special witnesses who needed to keep a lookout. And as soon as they saw that first little sliver of the moon appearing, they would rush to the temple and inform the high priest. And um, then he would confirm it and it would be announced. And how did they, they didn't have cell phones or telephones or radios in those days, so they would light big bonfires on strategic hilltops all through the land. And as the one saw the, the fire, that they would start that one. So the news would just spread like wildfire, literally, uh, through all the land that the new month had begun. And people would, would uh, know what to do. But of course, what happened after the Greco-Roman uh, occupations and first the ten tribes were scattered and then even the southern kingdom, uh, the people were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Now, there was always a remnant of Jewish people in Israel, but the majority were scattered to the four corners of the earth. So the rabbis decided to institute a fixed calendar I mean, they knew a lot about astrology by then, so they were able to figure it out and set a fixed calendar um, so that everybody, no matter where they were, would be able to follow the same calendar and celebrate the new month together. So it did a lot for the unity of the people. But um, strangely enough, while in exile, this observance of uh, Rosh Chodesh, or the new month, uh, by the way, Rosh in Hebrew is head, and Chodesh is month. So the word in Hebrew for the new month is Rosh Chodesh. It's the head of the month, the first day of the month. But this observance of the Rosh Chodesh just seemed to fade away, just like the moon. It, it waned and, until it almost disappeared. But since the restoration of Israel, especially, um, there's just been a growing interest, just like the moon is beginning to wax full again, and people are getting more and more interested in um, observing this uh, new month and the new moon. Now, how is it celebrated? Um, well, it, the, the rabbis decided, just like every good thing there is to celebrate, we do a blessing. We bless God for this gift that he's given us. Um, so whether you're saying a blessing over your meal or a blessing um, for uh, Shabbat, each good thing is celebrated with a blessing. And they're beautiful blessings. Um, I came across one that um, 
I'll actually read it to you. It's, it's one uh, uh, of the rabbis' blessings that they instituted, but it's very beautiful because people say, well, we're not sanctifying the, new, the moon itself. We're not praising the moon, God forbid, but we are praising God for the gifts he has given. So I'll just read it for you. It's very beautiful. Praised are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies with his word, and all heaven's hosts with the breath of his mouth. He gave them appointed times and roles, and they never miss their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. He is the true creator who acts faithfully, and he has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people carried by God from birth, Israel, who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their Creator for His glorious majesty. Praised are you, O Lord, who renews new moons. So that's very beautiful and it's a lovely blessing. Um, and by the way, uh, we will be posting this on the His Israel website, so you'd be able to see the video here on Facebook, but also uh, on the website. And um, the blessings will be there as well, and the notes, which if you want to go over them again, the notes will be there. But also, um, uh, Cindy's put together a very beautiful selection of um, meditations or thoughts to ponder for Nissan, a special one each day of the month. So please avail yourself of that. And um, because we found, well, we'll come to it, but the characteristic of this month of Nissan is hope. Um, hope in the faithfulness of God. And so a lot of them are focused on hope. So please uh, avail yourselves of that on the His Israel website. Now, um, in the blessing, it was mentioned the people carried by God from their birth. Now, that is talking about, of course, the people of Israel, because um, from the... Uh, Shalom, I've just seen Tony Pino has joined us. Shalom, Tony. Blessings to you from Jerusalem. And Cindy Welsh. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> So you will be able to find this if you missed the beginning. It will be posted uh, on Facebook and on the His Israel website. So you can catch up with that. <laughs> now, I just had read the blessing where it mentioned the people that God carried from birth. Now, you know when, when uh, the family of Jacob, which had grown into this very big people in Egypt, it was when they went through the Red Sea by a miracle of God, it was almost like they were being burst through the waters of the Red Sea. So that is, um, so these are the people that were burst by God. And then he carried them like a child through the wilderness. He provided everything, he, their food and their water, and had to look after them and discipline them like children. And um, so he carried the people like a child through the wilderness. And... Um, we were talking about how Israel identifies very much with the, the moon itself because just as the moon waxes and wanes, um, Israel has been threatened with annihilation um, throughout our history, even in our recent history as we've seen, and they seem to, to disappear and fade away, but then with God's promises, they restored and renewed, and they start growing and waxing full again, which, praise God, we see now here, even as Israel has been renewed and restored. So the renewal of the moon is a symbol of hope. It's always been a symbol of hope for the people of Israel, but it's a hope for all God's people that we have the hope to look forward to uh, in the future, as we know, according to his word. Now, just the ways of celebrating it, um, in synagogues, the congregations will always go outside at the end of the Shabbat service, the Havdalah. They go outside and hopefully see the moon if there are no clouds, and then they proclaim the blessings, and they say to one another, 
um, Shalom Aleichem, may peace be upon you, or uh, David Melech Israel Chai Vekayam, which is David, the king of Israel, uh, will live forever. And why will he live forever? Because the promised Messiah will be uh, Mashiach ben David, the, the Messiah, the son of David, who will be king. So uh, that even is a, f a future hope for Messiah in the greetings that they give one another after the synagogue service. But of course it can be recited by individuals at home. But interestingly, women have been taking a, a greater interest in um, the new months in Rosh Chodesh. Now it, it, it uh, is understandable because women identify very much physically with the monthly cycle and even with pregnancy. Physically uh, bodies uh, wax full with, with the, the, the baby and then once the baby is born then, the, then it, it uh, hopefully wanes uh, back into place. So, so even in, in phys physically, women identify very much with, with the, the new month. But all individuals, we go through in life, you go through times of fullness and then times when you feel down, you know, the ups and the downs and the challenges of life. And even in those times, the, the Rosh Chodesh is there to remind us, no, the... the, the <laughs> Shalom, Cindy. <laughs> I see your fat fingers. <laughs> so, um, so, so the new moon is there as a symbol of hope that even if we go through bad times, the Lord will restore and, and we will be able to uh, regain uh, hope and fullness again. Um, let me see what else. Oh, geographically in Israel, this month of Nisan that we're about to enter into. By the way, let me just remind you that um, the first day of Nisan this year is on next Tuesday, the 28th of March. So we're still at the end of Adar and moving into Nisan next month on Tuesday. So if you can get the blessings, you can start taking a look at that from next Tuesday, which is the first day of the month. Um, but now here in Israel, uh, it's the beautiful time of springtime, of course, and um, it's the time of the latter rains in Israel. These rains that we're having now are called the latter rains. Um, all the almond trees have blossomed and the first harvest of almonds will be ready for the Passover table. Because, of course, Passover is celebrated during Nisan. This is the time of the exodus from Egypt. And um, we have the Seder meal on, the, on um, Passover evening, which is the full moon. It's always on the 14th of Nisan. And when the moon is beautiful and bright and full. Um, now, the arrival, um, of, of course, we have the, the, the retelling of the story of Exodus at the, at the time of Passover. But also during the week of Passover, the Song of Songs is read, which is so beautiful because it's such a description of springtime. And, um, you know, I don't know if you know, but in Hebrew, the word for Passover is Pesach. And that's two words. It's Pe which is mouth, and sach, which means to speak or converse or communicate with your mouth. So Pesach, it's a time when God was speaking to his people, but um, and he continues to speak. But in Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 10 to 13, that also describes this beautiful springtime, it starts off saying, My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away, for behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Now I can hear the turtle doves singing all around my apartment here uh, already um, and it's a time of fragrance and the beautiful spring flowers. Uh, some of you have seen, I've been posting some of those up uh, on my Facebook page. 
but it's such a beautiful time and and we our beloved wants us to draw close to him so at the beginning of this biblical year this will be the beginning uh, we focus on new life and closer intimacy with our beloved and of course the fresh hope that he has to give us now uh, with every month I just quickly want to mention these things um, we still have some time uh, every month is also associated with one of the tribes because they're 12 tribes and 12 months and uh, they it's not in order of birth because if you remember Reuben is the firstborn son of Abraham I mean of Jacob <laughs> um, but the order goes according to their encampment around the tabernacle in the wilderness and then how they set out in a particular order when they were uh, given the instruction from God to, to move, to keep going. And this order is particular. I've also posted a picture of that on the His Israel website. So Paige, you can have a look at that. And you'll see the very first tribe to set out uh, is Judah, Yehuda, and um, so the first month of the biblical year is associated with the first tribe that set out in the wilderness, and that is the tribe of Judah. And we see this in Jacob's blessing of his sons in Genesis 49 verse 8, where he says, Yehuda, you, your brothers will acknowledge. He was then, in other words, saying, you will be the head of the tribes of Israel. And, well, funnily enough, we know that, that um, all the tribes, the ten tribes were scattered and lost, and all the, the Jewish people today are called Yehudim. They're called, like, Judahites. Um, and that's where, where uh, Judah was given the, the prominence here by Jacob on his deathbed, and he was the first tribe to lead the others through the wilderness. And then, of course, as we know, from the tribe of Judah would come Messiah, and he would suffer and serve. He would be the Passover lamb at this month, was when Yeshua was uh, crucified and died and buried and rose again. Um, with new life so there is hope and new life again uh, even with with Yeshua and um, and then of course he will be coming returning to reign on earth how as king of course but of the lion as the lion of Judah so there we have Yehuda again um, as a forerunner of Messiah and Judah's name in Hebrew uh, actually comes from the root yada, and yada means grateful praise. So in the face of all these wonders of our God and in our hope and anticipation of Messiah, we all we can do, our hearts are just filled with grateful praise to him. And of course, we also have the modern day Hebrew uh, toda. If I say to you, Toda Rabbah, Toda for being here, <laughs> um, it's thank you. So we have Yehuda being grateful praise, and that's all we can do. And which will bring me now to, we also, um, we also uh, associate a particular woman of the Bible with each month. Now, if you think about it, which woman is the obvious choice for Nisan? You have the Exodus, Moses, and Aaron, and the wilderness, and of course the woman for Nisan is Miriam. Now, Miriam, she's uh, recognized as one of the seven prophetesses in the Bible. And the others, I'll read them, the others are Sarah, Deborah, Hannah, or Hannah, Abigail, Hulda, and Esther. So, but Miriam is, is the first one recognized as a, a prophetess. Now, funnily enough, while in um, the biblical account that took place in Egypt before the Exodus, Miriam's name isn't mentioned. She's only referred to as the sister of Moses, Moses's sister. And 
only when they've gone through the Red Sea and are on the other side and they see the victory has been won by God against the enemy who were pursuing them to, to kill them, uh, only then is her name mentioned, Miriam. And when does it happen? It happens when they're on the other side, Moses just sings the song at the sea. There's this wonderful song praising God for their deliverance. And that's actually the very first time in that song when God's kingship is acknowledged, where it says God is king. And um, it's about to, they're about to um, become the nation of God, of course, after that. But after Moses' song, Miriam rises up and uh, starts a song. And all the women respond. And they have their tambourines and drums and they, they, they're singing and dancing in this uh, circle dance. And Miriam is singing this wonderful song of praise as well. And from then her name starts to be mentioned as Miriam. Um, now, there, there's, uh, some of you know that the famous medieval Torah commentator called Rashi. Now, he had something to say about this. And he said, the righteous women of that generation were confident that God would do miracles for them. So they brought drums and tambourines with them from Egypt. Now, that, uh, what is that telling us? By the way, the root of Miriam's name in Hebrew is Mar, M-A-R, which means bitter. So as that reflects the bitterness of the slavery that they experienced in Egypt. But here at the sea, uh, after their um, wonderful, miraculous deliverance, uh, Miriam starts singing, and uh, it's as if her song is redeeming that bitterness, that, that, that she is just offering such praise to God that all that bitterness that was there is just being lifted up and, and redeemed. And it was in faith that the women brought these tambourines and drums and instruments because they said, we are going to, God is going to see us through and we are going to praise him once we are safe and delivered. Um, which I think is rather a lovely, lovely idea that, that, that uh, in their dance and their song, because Moses' song, he says, I will. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. It's an individual salvation. But when Miriam gets up, she says, let us all, let us sing unto the Lord and praise him for his glorious um, might. So she, uh, it, it's as if uh, Miriam's looking forward to uh, the future kingdom of God and the, 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 the growth of her people and the coming to the land and uh, the eventual redemption, not only of Israel, but of all the world. So she's saying, let us, she just, as it were, opens it up uh, with a more future seeing uh, prophetic uh, view. She, she's, she seems to see things in the perspective of eternity and not just the present moment of deliverance. Shalom Anne, I'm so happy you made it. We're just coming near the end, but you will be able to see it again um, on, on the Facebook page. <laughs> it's lovely that you're here. So I think that's a lesson for us too, that, that, that we can uh, just always keep our eyes. Um, of course, we have to take note of what's happening around us, but just to see things in the perspective of eternity. That, that to see the bigger picture of what God is doing in our lives, in the lives around us, but also in the, the, the lives of all nations, of all people. That's why when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we know that when we're praying for Jerusalem, we're praying for His will to be done here, that it's for the benefit of all the nations as well. And we, we do learn, that's another lesson we do see in the Exodus story, that the issue was a great clash of wills. It was a clash of wills uh, between Pharaoh, the will of Pharaoh, who saw himself as a god. All the Pharaohs would see themselves as gods. 
and the will of the God of Israel. And Pharaoh would think, who are these nameless, faceless people, these slaves coming to me and demanding to go and worship their God? Who is their God? Who could be greater than I am? And so it was a clash of Pharaoh's will and God's will. And we have that, of course, in our own lives. Often our own wills um, stand against the will of God. So it's that's our battle going on all the time to, to say, Lord, show me your will and help me to walk in your ways and according to your will for my life. But here we saw the power struggle, the battle between man's will and God's will. And, you know, like the Israelites, I mean, we have to sympathize with the Israelites in the wilderness because we are weak too and we fail as well sometimes. And um, But when our hearts are yielded to our Father in heaven and we, we just desire to know him more and to please him in all we do in our service to him, then uh, we are reminded every new moon, every Shabbat, but also every new month, we can take a special time to, um, you know, just as we do at the dawning of each new day, to thank Him with grateful hearts and to um, just rejoice that we offered a new start and new hope and a new beginning filled with hope. And so uh, that's just uh, all I have to say at the moment about Nissan, but you can find out more. And please, uh, again, let me remind you to, to go to his Israel website and you can find it under live events and there you will find uh, the wonderful um, thoughts to ponder through this month of Nisan and uh, the meditations that we say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. So I'm sure you will be blessed by them. So thank you again for being here, and uh, we look forward, uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us next month as well. Each new Hebrew month, we will be getting together and looking at what each month has to teach us and to offer. So thank you, and shalom, shalom, and blessings from Jerusalem. <laughs>